Don't be afraid. Your grandfather is expecting us. Do you see him? No, ma'am. I don't even know what he looks like. You don't know your own grandfather? Oh, dear me. We'll see about this. British Rail Service. I brought a child up from London, an American. His parents recently passed away, poor thing. He's to be handed over to his grandfather, one Angus McGowan of Wester Ross. We made arrangements for Mr. McGowan to meet us here, but we can't seem to find him anywhere, and I'm afraid we don't know what he looks like. Angus McGowan, you see. Don't worry, ma'am. If Angus McGowan said he'd be here, He'll be here right as rain, and you'll know him when you see him. I see you. Thank you so much. Here we are. Come along, child. Oh, I can't carry this bag another step. Why don't you just sit here a moment, and I'll go and find the station master. Will you be all right? Yes, sir. I'll be back in a flash. Don't worry, lad. You're safe with me. Uh, Grandpa, you're going the wrong way. So, you've been here ten minutes, and you know your way around that? No, I mean, you're driving me on the wrong side of the road. Oh, uh, don't worry, lad. This is how we do it in Scotland. Father to you? Yeah, my mom was too. I really miss you. Oh, you'll never stop missing them, lad. But it won't always have so. What's done is done. What's this? Oh, don't go touching that now. That's your grandpa's whiskey. That stuff makes you drunk, Grandpa. No. If you drink it the wrong way. Man that crashed into us was drunk. He was driving on the wrong side of the road, just like you. The hell of it then.
Welcome home, John McGowan. To the land of your forefathers. Forefathers? Nobody asks forefathers. Well, not forefathers, honey. Forefathers. Your father's father and his father before him, and so on and so on. Back into history. Oh, <laughs> oh look at the wee lad. <laughs> You're a bunny one, aren't you? <laughs> and I'm a cow through and through, just like your pappy. <laughs> Are you my grandma? Oh! Grandma, damnation, no. Your grandma's been gone for years, lad. And a good woman she was. God bless her soul. No, this is Mrs. Cosgrove. She cooks and tends the garden. Just come on time. And she calls you for supper and you'll get along fine. Oh, anything you want, you just ask me. I love you like my own. Oh, I love you. Oh, don't smother them now, Maggie. Come on, let's feed them some supper. Oh. Eat, lad. You'll need your strength for the morning chores. Chores? I'm too young to do chores, Grandpa. That starts when you're about eight. Oh, you're never too young or old or sick or tired to do your chores. Right, Mrs. Cosgrove? Eat up, lad. It's mutton stew in honor of your arrival. Mm. Do you guys ever eat, like, pizza or hamburgers? Are bean and cheese burritos? No. I've heard it of pizzas and the uh, hammy burgers, but what are these burritos? You tell me what's in them and I'll do my best to make them for you. Do I go to bed now? Of course you can, lad. A good night's sleep will do you the world of good. Go easy on the lad, Angus. Give him time to adjust. He's old enough to work the sheep. Work will take his mind off his sorrow. Only time can mend a broken heart. His father worked the sheep at his age? Aye, and left home as soon as he was old enough. Didn't he now? Any mail in town for me? No. Just another bill from the tax man. Damn persistent lot. One of these days they're going to lock you up, Angus McGowan. They can't squeeze blood from stone. All this land is yours? Ours, lad. The castle, the hills. Further than the eye can see, has borne the Magan name for centuries. This land is magic, lad. You give to the land. The land gives back to you. It's been that way forever. And will be forever more. As long as we love and respect and care for it well. Are we rich? <laughs> We're rich, lad. In here, where it counts. Well, just you watch the sheep, and I'll be back for your dinner time. Watch them? Watch them do what? Well, whatever it is they do. Just see to it they don't do it too far from home.
That's called the dragon's lullaby. It's a bonny tune from a way back. Try it, lad. I can't, Grandpa. Of course you can. You're in my going. Put some spirit into it, lad. There you go, lad. Give your sadness to the music. Keep those pipes with you now. They're yours. Keep them with you at all times. You'll soon be piping like a Scotsman. Come on. As your grandma, lad. God bless us all. You and me are all that remains of the McGowan clan. It's up to us to protect the castle and the land. And it's up to you to carry on after I'm gone. Gone? Oh, don't worry, lad. I'm not going anywhere for a long while yet. You see this tree? It's a wishing tree. Touch it and make a wish. If your wish is good, and wish with all your heart, the fairy folk will make it come to pass. That stuff's only in fairy tales, Grandpa. Right you are, lad. Every nook and cranny of my garden land's got a legend behind it. Well, the chores are waiting. I'll see you at supper time. I wish I had a friend.
Jesus. Don't scare him, Grandpa. All right, Johnny. Uh, steady there, little fella. I'm not going to harm you. Where did you find him? Over there in the valley. Can I keep him, Grandpa? Please? Oh, now hold your horses, laddie. This is no ordinary house pet. This is the wee baby dragon. Oh! The sailor boy and the sailor boy loves me. We to be married <coughs> when he gets back from sea. Oh, I love him dearly, and I know that he... Mrs. Cosby! Oh, don't fright me like that. Look what I found! Off the sofa, lad. Oh, give it a break, Maggie. <laughs> well, I'll be. The dragon's taken a liking to you, in spite of your old sour puss. No. No, don't you be looking at me like that. Get down. It's okay, boy. She's my servant, she looks. Keeping a pet is a lifelong responsibility, lad. I know that, Grandpa. You've got to love and care for it. Aye, and clean up after it. I know all that, Mrs. Cosgrove. He's so cool. How did he get here? There is a legend of a dragon that once roamed these parts. And the brave knight, a McGowan he was, who slew it with his sword. They say that in the silence that followed the dragon's death, the knight heard a cry, like a wee babe. He followed the sound deep into the cave, and there he found a wee baby dragon. So sweet and sad and helpless that the knight's heart was softened and he could not raise his sword against it. He gathered up the baby dragon and took it with him. But the elves came by night and stole it away to the elfin kingdom. And nothing ever grows old or dies. Wow! The fairy folk have given you a dragon, lad. One of God's most wondrous creatures. You must keep the McGowan land, a haven for it. And most of all, Joan, protect it from the outside world. I will, I promise. Can I keep it, please? You'll be needing a name, then. Yeah, a name. Let's see. Do you got a name, little fella? <coughs> Yeller? Is that your name? Yow let it be then. And a bonny name it is.
Sono me. Thank you, Yana. For bringing happiness to my boy. Perfect for the Haunted Castle segment. Can't you just appreciate it for what it is, Bob? Not now, baby. I'm working. You're always working. That's right. Got to pay that college tuition somehow. Let me ask you a bit of a personal question, Lassie. Sure. Do all you American kids call your parents by their given name? Not all of us. Sort of a term of endearment. Should I take it down, sir? Yeah, let me roll here. Take it nice and smooth. delighted when they find out we want to use their castle on unsolved mysteries of history. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they're going to be thrilled. Hey, unsolved mysteries of history is a very popular program. Right, Brownie? Not in Scotland, sir. Not disturb anyone shooting here, sir. We'll set up right here, Brownie. Right, Charles, sir. Anything else? Yep, I got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Clear the frame, you guys. Armstrong video magic. And we're rolling. Brownie, quiet, I'm rolling here. Oh my God. You guys? Beth, quiet, I'm rolling here. Brownie? Beth! Brownie! 
Will you get out of the shot? No, wait. That looks good. Put your hands out like you're trying to touch a ghost. Scared. More scared. More scared. More scared. Dad, look out. Very funny, you guys. That's great stuff for the gag reel. Now, will you please clear the frame so I can get a shot of this... Settle down now. Don't worry, he won't hurt you. Oh, yeah? Go on, Yellow, away with you now. You heard me, go on. You're right, sir. Uh, yeah, I guess we're okay. Aren't we, guys? If my eyes don't deceive me, I'd call that a dragon. Amazing. A real-life dragon. Does, does that thing belong to you, son? He's not a thing. He's a dragon. And I'm not your son, sir. Right. Well, um, pleased to meet you anyway. Bob Armstrong, documentary filmmaker. Uh... This is Brownie McGee, my pilot. And uh, my daughter, Beth. I, I don't work with him. <laughs> I'm just visiting. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude. The name's McGowan. John McGowan. John McGowan. Nice to meet you. Johnny? Johnny, is everything all right? It's fine, Mrs. Cosgrove. Don't worry. We represent a famous television program in the United States. We're doing a documentary on the haunted castles of Scotland. Oh, this castle isn't haunted. It's a home of great dignity. Oh, hey, it's, it's spectacular. I didn't mean... No, no. Let's all go into the house and have a nice cup of tea. We don't get too many visitors up here. That's a great idea, Mrs. Cosgrove. Love be lovely, Bob. Yeah, let me help. Oh, uh, right. Castle's this way. This is so cool. I've got the dragon! <laughs> That's a terrible shot. A dragon, lad? How the blazes did you come by a dragon? It's a long story, sir. I'd love to hear about that sometime. You know, uh, John... This dragon of yours has got to be the most amazing thing I've ever heard of. Have you ever thought about sharing him with the rest of the world? Oh, no, sir. I couldn't be doing that. Really? Why not? Because I can't. Mr. Brownie, do try another slice of my uh, ginger cake. It's absolutely delicious, Mom. Oh, well, I didn't make it myself. And the scones. <laughs> Well then, if everyone's finished, the chores are waiting. I'll walk you to your thingamajig. It's a helicopter, lad. Right. Well, uh, we have to get back to Edinburgh before dark anyway. But listen, uh, here is my card, okay? This is uh, just in case you change your mind. I'm pretty well connected in media circles. I could help you put something together. Appreciate the hospitality, Bob. Come and visit any time. I make an exceptional haggis, if I do say so myself. Haggis? Well, bye. Hope to see you again sometime. That'll be a happy circumstance. It's a pleasure to meet you. I implore you, folks. Keep to yourselves what you've seen here today. Please. 
Hey, John, don't worry. Your secret is safe with us. time to see me. Yeah, it's a real pleasure meeting you, sir. I'm a longtime admirer. Are you now? Make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Beautiful place. I bought a 400-year-old country manor, tore it apart piece by piece, and reconstructed it here. So, we'll make it fast, young man. I don't like sales pitches. Right. Good. Okay. Um, I have here photographic evidence and corroborative eyewitnesses proving the existence of a real live dragon. You're about to see may surprise and shock you, but Mr. McIntyre, I guarantee you, it will change your life. Okay, here we are, flying over the castle. Now, I'm not at liberty to say where this castle is right now, but I will say you won't find it on any map. I was setting up this spectacular shot for this uh, documentary I'm working on. Pilot, Brownie, and my daughter. Now, I didn't know it, but they had just seen the dragon. Then I see it. Dang! Dragon! Sheesh! Weeps! Oh! Oh! Well, what do you think? Well, I had a little camera trouble there. Darn drag, it damn near broke my lens. I could run it back for you in slow-mo if you like. How many other folks claim to have seen this dragon? My crew, they're reliable. Uh, the kid who owns the castle, the old lady who lives with him, and now you, sir, you're the first person that came to mind. With a modest bit of financial backing, I could deliver some very marketable footage of that dragon. If you're square with me, young man, I'll make you the same offer I made for Nessie. I'll fund an expedition to capture and transport the creature back to Edinburgh. I'll build a place to house it and promote it as a fine family attraction. Oh, well, that's a very interesting proposition, sir, but... What's in it for me? Oh, I'll make it well worth your while. Now, this young laird of the manor, it's his dragon, you see. Uh, well, actually, sir, the boy might be a little resistant to the idea. He's sort of a, a noble savage type. Hmm. Wants a lot of money, does he? Mr. McIntyre, I'll be honest with you. I did a little research. And I think he's got some tax problems, if you know what I mean. You're saying we might exert a bit of pressure. Well, I'll leave that to your discretion, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm just passing along a little intelligence. <laughs> I like you, Mr. Armstrong. You're smarter than you look. Oh, well, coming from you, sir, I'll take that as a compliment.
Meister. Hi. Hallo again. <laughs> Surprised to see us? What's wrong? They say we owe them a hundred and seventy thousand pounds. And if we don't pay the money within thirty days, they're going to take McGowan Castle away from us. You know, John, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Now, this may seem a little far out, but just, just indulge me for a minute here. This could be the answer to all your problems. What if we were to bring the dragon to civilization, put it on display, just for a limited engagement, you name it, maybe a, a, a movie down the road? Think what an impact it would have on the rest of the world, socially and, and financially. You mean to put him in a zoo or something of the sort? Like a monkey in a cage? No, no, not like a zoo. More like a, a real classy amusement park kind of place. He's a force of nature, he is. I don't think he'd take kindly to captivity. You just hit the nail on the head, Mrs. Cosgrove. He's a force of nature. Bigger than you, bigger than me, bigger than all of us. John, that dragon doesn't just belong to you. It belongs to every man, woman, and, and especially every child on the planet. Supposing we did do something of the sort. I'm not saying yes, mind you, but just suppose. Could we make enough money to satisfy the tax books? Oh, Johnny boy, everybody would come out of this a winner. Well, then, looking at it that way, I mean, for the kids and all, I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Yes! For a little while, that is. If Yowler doesn't mind. Okay, Yowler. Calm down. These are our friends. They're going to help us save the land. The only thing is, they need to take you and me to the big city for a time, to show you to some folks. Will you do it, Yala? Uh, hold on a minute here, John. I just flashed on a potential problem. Uh, does Yowler, by any chance, breathe fire? Oh, no, he's much too young for that. Too young? Dragons can live for over 500 years. They don't learn to fly or breathe fire until they reach, you know, until they're beyond the pup stage. This is Beth, Yowler. She's a very special friend. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you guys later. Let's, uh, come on, boy. Come on. This is where I first found Yala. Not when I was a wee lad. Amazing to think that you were once American. You sound so authentic. <laughs> mm, making fun of my accent now, are we? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. I think it's cool. five when my parents divorced. I thought it was the most tragic thing in the world. It must have been awful for you. Your parents dying like that. It was a sad time indeed. And a shock too. Coming from the land of cartoons and pizzas to the middle of nowhere with the old folks. The only thing is I scarcely remember the bad anymore. Only the good times. Wish I could do that. 
I've been mad at my dad for so long. I want to love him, but he's just so... Well, you see how he is. I'm not even sure that I like him. He is a bit of a character. Scared me. Are you all right? Uh, oh, I was just listening to my music. I heard no music. <laughs> Do you like it? It's downright flabbergasting. Don't you have a stereo here? Oh, just an old gramophone and some bagpipe records. like to dance? I have been known to cut loose with a jig now and then. Embarrassing. <laughs> well, I think you're doing great. <laughs> Look as funny as I feel, do I? It's kind of dancing harder than it looks. turn our attention to the future, the Dragon World. It's a great gesture you're making, John. Sharing your good fortune with the children of the world. Just sign here, lad. And what is it he is putting his name to, Mr. McIntyre? Well, it's the 30-day contract between John McGowan and McIntyre Enterprises, transferring guardianship of the creature to me for the period of time that it's in my custody. It protects you from any liability and grants me the power to act in the creature's best interests. Oh, his name is Yowler, sir. Oh, Yowler. That's a grand name.
have prepared this cheese with an appropriate dosage. If you feed it to the creature, we'll get underway. You won't hurt him when it's cold. He'll sleep like a baby. And when he wakes up, he'll be in Edinburgh, living like a king. It's okay, Yala. These are our friends. Look, they brought you a treat. have been lining up, camping in the streets for today's grand opening of Lester McIntyre's Dragon World and the historical unveiling of this mythic feast that's been touted as the eighth wonder of the world. Gentlemen, lads and lassies, we welcome you to Dragon World! <laughs> Happy lads and lasses. Come on, let's go and see our dragon. like it here either. It's just for a wee while. No, don't shoot! At ease, men! Calm down, lad. They're armed with non-lethal tranquilizer darts. You guys, he hates it here. I should have listened to Mrs. Cosgrove. Don't threat, lads and lassies. Our folks know what they're doing. Dragon just needs time to accept things as they are. Come on now, let's go and greet the paying public. Don't be sad. 
only for a month. Sign the contract. Just have to make the best of it. the joy he's given to folks. Is it our right, sir? To trade his happiness for theirs? You've got to think of your own happiness too, lad. Based on today's ticket sales, in six months' time, I can make each and every one of you a multimillionaire. You've done for me, Mr. McIntyre. But this isn't the life for Yala and me. At the end of the month, I'll be taking him home. I'm afraid that won't fit in with Yala's schedule. Schedule? I intend to exercise my option to extend the contract. I beg your pardon? He can't do that. Can he? I can do anything I damn well please. That's right here, in the contract. I can't keep him cooped up like this. He'll die of a broken heart. Dragon's a cold-blooded creature, lad. It can adapt to anything. Trust me. I'm an expert on cold-blooded animals. Takes one to know one. Mind your tongue, young lady. I trusted you. And all this time you've been deceiving me. That's not true. Confusing me with your city ways. No, John, I swear I'm your friend. Yowler's my friend. And with your help, I've betrayed him. Jeez. Kid's got himself in a hell of a mess. You're despicable, Bob. I can hardly believe you're my father. to speak with my dragon. Sorry, lad. You are no longer allowed in the courtyard. Mr. McIntyre's orders.
Leave me alone. I don't want your sympathy. And I don't want to be a millionaire. I want to help you get Yowler back. Mr. McIntyre, are you there? What is it, Armstrong? Please, sir, if you'll let us in, we've got something very important to tell you. It's about the dragon. Make it snappy. Mr. McIntyre. We have to set Yana free now. I'll do nothing of the sort. Please, Mr. McIntyre. He's a danger to himself and everyone around him. Armstrong, can't you control your daughter? Afraid not, sir. She takes after me. Well, I'd appreciate it if you'd all just keep out of my business. I've sent for Dr. William Nelson, the finest veterinary surgeon in London, to come and operate on the beast. Remove whatever it is that's causing the problem. A simple surgical procedure, and everything will be fine and dandy. You can't do that. Oh, yes, I can. That contract gives me total authority over the beast while it's in my custody. You tricked John into signing that contract, and you changed the deal without even discussing it. What if I did? Not my responsibility to make him read the contract. You could have read it yourself if you're so curious. I thought you read it. Fine print gives me a headache, baby. You are a pathetic imitation of a man. And you, Mr. McIntyre, are what's commonly known as a butthead. I'm fed up to the back teeth with you and your whining little brats. Hey, I do not whine. And I'm no kin to him, sir. Get out of here, or I'll have you thrown out. Give the boy back his dragon, or I'll... Or you'll what? Oh, jeez, that hurts. Mr. Armstrong. Daddy! Come on, you guys, give me a hand here. Mr. Armstrong, what the thunder are you doing? Going out on a limb for you, kid. We got McIntyre's confession on tape, and we got three hours until Yowler's tranquilizers wear off. We're, uh, 
winging it. I've come for a refund. Beg your pardon, sir. A refund. I want my money back. Twenty pounds I paid him. That damn dragon practically singed my beard off. Sorry, sir. We are closed for the day. Come back tomorrow. I know it's not your fault. Sorry, lads. For you, sir. What the devil's going on? Yeah, let's pass the pub stage now. Come on. Your alarm system off. No, but this generally works in the movies. waiting. Get me my chopper now!
Would you, uh, consider possibly ever? I'm sure you wouldn't, but would you marry me? Good boy, Yala. You're home now. Safe and sound. Johnny! Johnny! Oh, Johnny! Oh, oh thank goodness you're home. Oh, and Beth, welcome back, dear. Hi, Mrs. Cosgrove. Oh, and Yola! Look at ye! I never thought I'd be so happy to see the old reptile back. You were right about the big city, Mrs. Cosgrove. It's no place for Yala and me. They're coming. They're coming. What do they want? They want Yala. They're not going to stop hounding us until they have her. Go now, Yala. Back to where you came from. Go on, Yala. Off with you now. Don't you understand, boy? You're not safe here anymore. I've ruined it for you. Life for us will never be the same now that they know where we are. Go on, Yala. Get away from me. I don't want you here anymore. You're too much responsibility. You've been a burden to me all my life with your yowling and your big clumsy ways. I saved you from McIntyre. What more do you want? Now go on. Live your own life and let mine be. Don't you understand, Yowler? I don't want you anymore! I wish I'd never found you in the first place. So go on! Get away from me! where you came from. Gone. What do you mean, gone? I was here a minute ago. I saw myself. It's gone. Back to where he came from. Then get him back here right now. I can't do that, sir. What's done is done. Right. I understand there's some dispute as to the ownership of this dragon. Yes, sir. 
No question about it. The dragon's the property of McIntyre Enterprises. Uh -huh. Mr. Armstrong here showed us a bit of videotape in which you admit to having acquired the dragon by fraudulent means, sir. <laughs> Misunderstanding, officer. The contract is 100% legally binding. So you accept full responsibility, then? I do. Then you're under arrest, Mr. McIntyre. Destruction of property, creating a nuisance, endangering the public, reckless flying. I'll have your job for this. Oh, you are welcome to it, sir, but I doubt you'd pass the physical. Come on. I'll fly Mr. McIntyre to Edinburgh. Then I'll be back, Mrs. Cosgrove. I'll be dreaming of a nice hot supper when I return. And you shall have it, Mr. Brownie, my dear. Thanks, Brownie. Pleasure, sir. Mark, Marcy. Thank you, sir. I love you, Daddy. Oh, I love you, too, baby. failed in my responsibility, Grandpa. I saved the land. I lost you, Haller, in doing it. I wish... I wish you, Haller, would come back. I could tell him I'm sorry. gone now. Back to the fairyland. Where nothing ever grows old or dies. This is our land, and the land of our fathers before us. A magical place, Johnny. Filled with wondrous tales. you come to harm. Oh, don't think you can come into the house with all your fire breathing and such. <laughs> now, 
Welcome home. <laughs>